Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about management case studies. So we have been discussing in the past as well a lot of management case studies. And today again I am going to discuss a total of 5 case studies with you. And I hope that these case studies are going to be very useful for the upcoming examination. As you all know that the notification is already out and we have started preparing with our 53 day plan. So let us start with the case studies for today. The first question is talking about motivation. I've already discussed this case study in the previous videos as well, but I'm going to discuss it again and pick up some additional questions that can be asked from this case study. It is about Maslow's need hierarchy theory and about a manager called as Ashutosh. Now these are the keywords that have been highlighted here. You can pause the video for a while, read the entire case study in case you've not seen the previous videos. The personal objectives of employees are also fulfilled. Shivam, who is an employee, wants to live a secure life in which he and his family of three are meeting the basics of life. So the focus of Shivam is on meeting the basics of life, for example, security of job uh, and uh, pay that he is receiving. He cannot afford to lose his job with the responsibility of his family over his shoulders. He knows that job security is possible only when he keeps getting promoted in regular intervals. So job security in this case is directly connected with promotion. His dream is also to hold a managerial position in his organization. So this is also a motivational factor for Shivam in this case. Now what is the question that has been created here? The question says as per Maslow's need hierarchy theory which of the following statements are true so we have to identify the true statements. Number one as per Maslow need arises randomly according to the situation a person is facing. Does it happen? According to Maslow's need hierarchy theory we follow a proper hierarchy of theory hierarchy of needs sorry and we move from the lower order needs to the higher order needs and we cannot jump our needs. So need does not arise randomly according to the situation. Therefore, this one is uh, uh, certainly incorrect. Once a certain order of a need is satisfied, it ceases to be a motivating factor to be for a person. This is certainly correct uh, and is said very clearly in Maslow's need hierarchy theory. Shivam is promoted to the position of assistant manager and physiological needs remain the motivating factor for him. This is nowhere mentioned in the note in the uh, question in the case study and therefore it is also incorrect. As per Maslow need arises in a certain order of preference and not randomly. This is certainly correct as I explained through the first option. A man wants more of everything and thus all the needs as per the hierarchy are equally important for him. No, this does not happen. Some needs are more important for a person and the other needs uh, do not take that much preference. Whereas some other needs uh, at different points of time hold more importance. So the answer to this question is C, 2 and 4 are correct. Let us come to the second question that can also be asked from this case study. Let us assume that Ashutosh opts to choose elder first ERG theory. So in this case you need to, you need to be aware about elder first ERG theory very clearly. Rather than the traditional Maslow's need hierarchy theory, what is the re relation between these two theories of motivation. To explain to you very briefly, Elder First ERG theory stands for uh, existence, relatedness and growth needs. So these are the different kinds of needs that have been specified by Elder Fur. But these needs are only a modification of Maslow's hierarchy theory which divided it into five parts. Physiological needs, number one. Safety and security needs, number two. Social needs, number three esteem needs number four and self-actualization needs number five. Existence needs can be clubbed into physical, physiological and safety needs can be clubbed into existential needs. Relatedness needs are social and esteem needs and self-actualization needs are actually uh, the fourth, uh, the third one that is growth needs. So growth needs are self-actualization needs. So when Ashutosh opts to choose elder first ERG theory rather than Maslow's need, Maslow's need hierarchy theory. What is the relationship that is created? The options are number one, existence needs include esteem needs, relatedness needs include social and security needs, growth needs include self-actualization needs. Growth needs here are correctly explained. Existence needs include safety and physiological needs. Therefore, this is incorrect. 
The second option says existence needs include physiological, not psychological. This is physiological and safety security needs. Relatedness needs include social and esteem needs. Growth needs includes self-actualization needs. This is certainly correct and also our answer. Let us also have a look at C and D option to be more clear. Existence needs include safety and security needs. Relatedness needs include esteem needs. Growth needs include social and self-actualization needs. Certainly incorrect. Existence needs include self-actualization needs. Certainly incorrect. So if you do not know or have you not if you have not read about the relationship between ERG and Maslow's need hierarchy theory or if you don't understand it you will not be able to answer this question. I hope you have understood it. Let's move to the third question through this case study. It is about Gandalf included. It is a company which deals in providing car service at home and on road. There are different departments. The top management tries it level best to synchronize the activities of different departments in the best possible manner. The result is increased efficiency and attainment of goals. The department heads of the company are specialists in their respective areas and top management tries to work with them not with authority but by respecting their views on the subject. Because the company has grown and now has many branches. These are the keywords. Based on these keywords, let's understand what kind of questions can be asked. The question is, in the above case, Ganwell Inc. is relying on instrumental values like coordination in order to achieve its end goals or terminal values. Which are the, one, which are the models of organization behavior have been followed by Gandalf Inc.? Autocratic, custodial, supportive or collegial. In case you understand all these four models, you can move forward, you can skip it also or you can increase the speed of this video. In case you have never read about these models, let, let us first understand these four models and then we will come to the answers. These four models or these four methods of organization behavior are autocratic, custodial, supportive and collegial. Now autocratic model is a power oriented model which says that the only way to lead people below you or the only way that uh, superiors can lead over subordinates is through power and authority. Custodial model talks about economic resources and says that the way you can motivate people is through money. Supportive model relies on leadership which means support and participation of everybody in the organization. Whereas the last collegial model talks about partnership which is one step ahead of leadership which relies a lot on delegation, a lot on teamwork and assumes that people are going to be involved in responsible behavior. So let us understand these in more detail before moving back to the question. What does autocratic model say? Autocratic model is based on power. The managerial orientation is to use its authority in order to get the work done. Therefore, employee's orientation is to, obey, is to obey whatever has been said by the seniors. The employee psychological result is dependence on the boss because the boss tells the subordinate everything that needs to be done. Employee needs are met through subsistence only and their psychological needs are not at all met. The performance result is minimum and uh, it is normally followed at the shop level of the organization or the lower level of the organization where it is assumed that people belong to theory X kinds of uh, motivation, X, uh, theory X kinds of leadership and at the same time it is also known that people like to obey and people are not happy or not satisfied uh, through psychological factors but they are uh, more satisfied, more happy, more uh, motivated through monetary factors only. The second one is custodial model which relies on money in order to manage people under you. The employee orientation is on security and benefits and that is why they are motivated primarily by money. This is normally followed in lower to middle level of the organization. So between mid and lower level Custodial model works very well because in this kind of uh, model you are not relying on power but you are in fact relying on money in order to motivate people. The third one is supportive model uh, which uses leadership and support in order to motivate its employees. The employee orientation in return is focused on performance. The psychological result is participation of employees and it uh, provides status and recognition needs just because there is participation of employees in decision making. 
collegial model moves a step further and focuses on partnership and complete delegation of work so that self actualization needs of people of the employees is met now let's come back to the question the question says gandalf inc is relying on instrumental values which are the models of organization behavior has been followed by gandalf inc now gandalf inc is relying heavily on its management in order to get the work done and the management in return is not uh, getting the department heads departmental heads to follow them blindly but is working with them by respecting their views on the subject and by ignoring or by ensuring that the ego clashes do not happen in the organization what this this, this means is that the departmental heads are given as much delegation as possible the departmental heads self actualization needs are uh, are are uh, are fulfilled in the organization and it is ensured that a responsible behavior out of departmental heads is also carried out therefore the answer to this question is collegial now a lot of students might feel that the answer to this question should be supportive in nature but why it is not supportive is because they are not demanding job performance they are not demanding job performance rather they are getting job performance by working with the departmental heads and when you are working with the departmental heads not through authority but by respecting their views therefore by involving them in team work then you are certainly not in a, a supportive leadership mode but you are in collegial mode I hope you have understood it. Let's come to the second last case study for today. It is about M Y Bank. We've already read about this case study as well in the previous videos. If you have not, please go back and read it. Let's uh, let me give you some time so that you can go through the case study. You can pause the video for a while. Let me come to the second page. Let me come to the third page now. you can pause the videos and you can go through this case study it's a long case study and a very interesting case study the question is my bank focuses on the development of its business by formulating effective plans to succeed in the long term which are the following functions of management is closely related to planning now the interesting thing about this case study and this question is that the question has nothing to do with the nothing to do with the case study even if you had not gone through the case study you could have done this question and even if you had gone through the case study you might not be able to answer this question and that is how it actually happens in rbi examinations in management a lot of questions have case studies wherein the question is not connected with case studies so the question is asking us which of the following uh, functions of management is closely related to planning now as per the different models of management as per theories of management it has been proven that controlling which is the last function of management is closely related with the first function of management which is planning because controlling and planning are directly connected with each other and dependent upon each other so if the controlling is bad then the planning because it's a circle circular cycle so if controlling is bad then the planning is not going to be effective enough if the planning is bad then the controlling is not going to be effective enough let's come to the last question for today it is about mayo clinic we've already discussed this case study in the previous videos and i'm picking up another set of questions that can be asked from this case study so you can go through the previous videos also in case you have not seen those it is about doctor patient interactions mayo clinic has been doing wonderfully well for the past uh, 50 years or so but now it wants to get into another area and in order to make that a reality it has started or it has created another organization called as park you can go through the case study in case you have not gone through it you can pause the video i have already highlighted all the keywords so an outpatient lab called spark has been created here and this con- internal consultancy is doing very well because it has expanded from just two employees to 32 employees now and it has undertaken projects to reorganize the workflows in a practice test new strategies for patient education use technology to improve physical physician consultations and re- redesign the traditional exam room that means it has done a lot or it has uh, bring out a lot of, lot of changes in the way patient and uh, doctor 
interact with each other you can go through this uh, page as well let's come to the question in which of the following stages does spark belong to with respect to testing new kinds of doctor patient interactions so as per the case study spark was started in early 2000s and by the end of 2010 it had created an army of 32 employees and it had been providing internal consultancy to mayo and at the same time changing the way doctor patient interaction was happening in various organizations these are the different stages let's come to these stages before jumping to the answer there are these four stages the first is pioneer stage second is growth stage third is mature stage and fourth is decline stage in the pioneer stage you're starting with your business where your revenue is almost negligible your with your revenue is almost negligible and the time which has gone past in creation of your startup or your organization is also very less so it's you're a newly formed company you're trying to find out a business model you're trying to understand how to make money uh, through the organization and how to create a successful business model the growth stage is the second stage where there is a certain increase in the revenue and the time elapsed has also increased now now the sudden increase or spike in revenue is because now you have proved your business model the mature stage is when uh, you reach your peak and then you start declining so you reach your peak in the mature stage that is another area where a question can be created and when you start declining then you enter the decline stage of your business this is the industry life cycle in this case it can be said very clearly that the company has reached the growth stage the reason being almost 10 years have passed second is it has an army of 32 employees third is it is already providing internal consultancy to um mayo as well as other organizations and therefore it means that it is already generating revenues keeping all these in uh, these uh, factors or elements in mind we can con conclude very uh, surely that the organization is certainly in the growth stage so this was all about this particular lesson wherein i discussed a lot of case studies related to management in case you like this lecture do not forget to subscribe to the channel press the bell icon and if you have not used the uh, uh, if you have not used the uh, crash course that i have already created and through which we are revising Uh, both phase one and phase two current affairs and a lot of other things you can subscribe to that as well in order to prepare more effectively for the upcoming RBI and SEBI examination. Till then, all the very best. Take care.